Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. We are all waiting with bated breath for the big Klemperer box, 95 fun-filled CDs. It's just his orchestral music, I think. Recordings, not the operas or other things, but we'll have to wait and see what's in it. In any case, I'm trying to get a head start on that production. Of course, I'll cover the epic tome when it arrives. But until then, we could talk about these littler boxes. And I'd like to get through them because well, what a legacy this was. Really amazing. And this is his Mozart orchestral music box. Um, eight CDs of Mozart, yes, on EMI still, but it's Warner. And I think Warner actually issued this as well with changing its little logo thing. And Klemperer's Mozart, well, it's pretty wonderful, isn't it? There's a little bit of duplication in here. We'll go through it all. But, you know, Klemperer's Mozart was... Mozart seen through the lens of Beethoven. It's big, beefy Mozart. So people who like the slim down period instrument, sort of namby-pamby Mozart, well, actually the period instrument namby-pamby Mozart isn't so namby or pamby. Actually, it's quite vigorous for the most part, but it's smaller scale. Some would say it's more stylish. I don't know. I like Mozart seen through the lens of Beethoven. It's just so, so substantial. It has, it has fiber and muscle and all of those things. And Mozart's, Mozart's music has those things. There's no question about it. You know, uh, Klemperer it manages to, to salvage the, the concept, if it needs salvaging at all, because he's so unsentimental. And that's what really does it. It's not romantic, Mozart. It's just bigger Mozart. <laughs> Let's put it that way. You know, he doesn't he doesn't moon over the slow movements. He doesn't he doesn't slobber over bits of it as people accused, for example, Bruno Walter of doing, which I don't think he did either. His Mozart is absolutely gorgeous. Because Mozart is, of course, a universal musician who had universal musical qualities. Some of it's very romantic, some of it's very classically poised, some of it's really big and exciting and grand. Some of it is smaller scale. He has all those things. He sees, he sees all things to all people. And what you choose to emphasize, well, it depends on how well you do the emphasizing, doesn't it? And Klemperer does it very, very well. So let's just talk about what's in here. Um, and you'll get a sense of what's going to be in the big box and what you might still be able to get separately if you play your cards right and it's still available. Hmm. That'll be interesting to see which of these stick around once the big box comes out. Anyway, uh, we start. We start here. Let's see. We have dates. Oh, something else to point out. You know, Klemper, you know, kept going until like, you know, the day before he died practically. And he got slower and slower and slower and slower and, you know, whatnot. The latest recording here, it would seem, is like 1965-ish, which is like really good because, you know, it, it came in before... Klemperer became completely, completely ossified in his handling of Tempe. You know, I mean, there he did he did lose it toward the end. Let's not kid ourselves. So it, at least with these performances, um, they all happened, however slow they may be, uh, and some of them are, um, before he, he completely, completely gave up the ghost, as it were. So anyway, what do we got? The Overture to Cosi Fan Tutti and the Adagio and Fugue, K546, Symphonies 25, 29 from 1965, and the Paris Symphony, number 31. So that's disc number one. These are very well-filled discs, by the way. 76 minutes, 78, 78, 77, 75, 77, 74. It's wonderful. My fear is that the box will be like original jackets, which is lovely, except that you'll have 40-minute discs. Hmm. It's a good deal to get it this way. Um, okay, then we get uh, CD2, Symphonies 33, 34, and 40 from 1956. And the Masonic Funeral Music. Oh, the Masonic Funeral Music is just marvelous in this performance. Oh, you could, as you might expect from Klemperer. But all of these are beautiful performances. And one of the things that makes them so beautiful, particularly these earlier ones, you know, the, 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 the 33 and 34 and 29, is the emphasis, as always, on Mozart's fabulous writing for woodwinds, which Klemperer always highlights. And it's so important. I keep saying this. And it makes no difference whether something's on period instruments or modern instruments, because it's up to the conductor. 
you know, to highlight these parts. And just as often as not, the period instrument movements are completely boring and colorless when it comes to the handling of wind sonorities, even though, you, you know, they could do it. I mean, nobody did it better than Klemper, and that gives the music so much extra color and point and, and, and charm and character, um, even if the tempi aren't so quick, it, because you get to hear more. And because the colors are constantly changing, and that's such a big deal in Mozart. All right, anyway. Uh, disc three, the Hofner, the Linz, the Prague, and the Magic Flute Overture. These are all from 1962. They are beautiful performances, absolutely wonderful, um, even if the finale of the Hofner is not as fast as possible. But it's really clear, and it's lovely. Then we've got Eine Kleine Nachtmusik from 1964. Symphonies 39 and 41, the Jupiter and the 39. Hands down, 39 is the best recording of that ever made in the history of humanity. I mean, it really is just amazing. And it's amazing because he doesn't take the finale too quickly. I have talked about this before with this performance. It's sort of like a German dance. And you've got these inner parts that are going chugga 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 um, that's amazing. Then we got the Grand Partita Serenades. These performances of the serenades were, were kind of unusual when they were done. You know, regular conductors did not do all the wind serenades regularly, but wind guy that he was, Klemperer did. The Grand Partita and the wind serenades 10, 11, and 12, along with the Serenata Noturna and a couple more overtures, the abduction from the Seraglio and the Marriage of Figaro. But these wind serenade performances are just splendid. Most of the time, they aren't conducted at all. You just have a wind ensemble just that does them, although the Grand Partita does. And you've got the London Wind Quintet plus Ensemble and the New Philharmonia Wind Ensemble. And even with those slightly snake charmerish oboes, I mean, these are wonderful performances of music that was really kind of rare and not done by conductor of the, sta conductor of the stature of like Klemperer. So these were really, this was a find. I remember hearing them years and years ago. It's like, Wow, this is really cool stuff. Um, and not the usual, usual. And then we've got, let's see, more overtures. Yes, we've got overtures. Oh, the other, Don Giovanni and La Clemenza de Tito. That was on that disc I was just telling you about. Then we've got the, the 1950s recording of Symphonies 29, a little zippier. Um, 38, the Prague, a little zippier. And number 40 from 1962. The other 40 was from 56. Yeah, okay, great. I mean, they're, they're both wonderful. They really are. I mean, 62 was the same time he did 39. It was a good year. Just a very good year for Klemperer's Mozart. And then we've got the 1956 number 39 and 41, Jupiter from 54, and then another Eine Kleine Nachtmusik from 1956. If you thought Eine Kleine Nachtmusik was Kleine, listen to this. He doesn't he doesn't stretch it out. He doesn't. It's not like slow and heavy, but it's, it has just a warmth and a generosity and a, a bigness of, 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 of mind, of sensibility. It's not, you know, it's hard, a hard quality to, to describe. You sense that something important is happening when these performances are, are whizzing by on your, on your stereo. You really do. I mean, it, that's just what great conductors do. They imbue what they do with meaning. And Klemperer's Mozart has meaning. And you will enjoy it accordingly. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.